this world has been lied to for thousands of years. This world has been lied to in the aspect that they've been trying to, uh, it's been, they've been try, trying to be convinced that you need to be baptized in order to go to heaven. They said that you have to do good works in order to go to heaven. You know what that is? That's a lie. Amen. Hey, listen, you've got to believe the truth. And, and see, we, we, we get too sheepish about this. And they say, well, you know, they believe their way, you know, and, and who am I to, you know, try to convince them? I'll tell you who you are. You're a bearer of the truth. Amen? Do not let the truth intimidate you. Don't let the lies intimidate you. If you're saved by the grace of God, then you got saved because you heard the truth. Most men out there today are sick and tired of being lied to. They want somebody to hear the truth, to tell them the truth. Amen? That's why I, I love preaching in the prisons, Brother B.A. Because why? Because they've been lied to all their life. Amen? It, 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 you, have, you have the most liberty preaching in a prison than you do at most other places. Amen. You know, we joke around and say, well, that's because they're a captive audience and they ain't going nowhere and they ain't got nothing else to do. No, listen, they just want you to lay it out in the light. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And listen, you get more people upset preaching the truth in the church than you do the prison. That's right. Amen. Why? Because they just want to hear the truth. Amen. Amen. And listen, the gospel message is a true message. I, I, I know this preacher up in Maine and he... Uh, I love getting together with him. We're up there every year. And, and uh, he tells me stories about his upbringing, you know. And he's, uh, oh, he's probably in his late 70s. And he's got some of the wildest stories, you know. And uh, he'll tell me a story. And I'll, and I'll go like this, you know. And he said, Brother Cobb, he said, I'm not lying. He said, I'm telling the gospel truth. You ever heard anybody say that? Yeah. Isn't it amazing that the gospel is the standard yes, we use in which to yes, let somebody yes. know we're telling them the truth or not? Amen. Listen, you know what I'm telling you tonight? It's from the Word of God. It's a gospel truth. Amen. The Word of God is true. Amen. People say, well, you know, uh, every religion says that they're true. What makes us different? We've got the truth. Our God is the supreme authority of the universe. Amen. Amen. God was around before Joseph Smith was around. Amen. God was around before Muhammad was around. Amen. He was around before Russell was around. Amen. Amen. He was around before Mary Baker Eddy was around. Amen. Amen. Our God has always been. That makes him the authority. That makes what he says the truth. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. I ain't got, listen, I ain't got no problem believing that that book is the word of God and there might be something else out there that I just ain't found yet. I ain't worried about that. Amen. Why? Because it's the truth. Amen. Amen. The Word of God is true. It's quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter number 2. Look at verse number 13. It says, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, and the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself the twain one of man, so making peace. Here it is, verse 16. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enemy, enmity thereby. The message is a reconciling message. You know what happened the day that I got saved? I went from being an enemy of God to a child of God. You know what made that peace? The cross. That peace, that cross made that peace. God hung there on the cross and he stretched one hand toward heaven and one hand toward man. And because of the sacrifice that he made, he brought them together. Isaiah 59 verse 2 says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Listen, I don't care what the cults tell you. We're not all God's children. Amen. If you've never been saved, you're not a child of God. And I, I will watch a documentary on, uh, uh, the, uh, I think it was a resurrection or something like that, uh, and years ago, and it was on a history channel or something like that. And they said that, you know, we're all going the same way. We're just traveling our own path. That's not Bible, amen? Hey, listen, I was, listen, when I was lost, I was an enemy of God. You said, Brother Craig, you got saved when you was only eight years old. How can an eight-year-old be an enemy of God? Because 
I wasn't saved. I had reached that age of accountability. I knew what the difference between right and wrong was. And I rejected Christ up until that point. But that message of the cross is a reconciling message. It's a, it's a peace-giving message. Amen? It's a reconciling. It, it brings God and man together. It, it, it breaks down that middle wall of partition. We don't have to go through a man. We're able, the Bible says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. The only thing that gives me the authority to come boldly to the throne of grace is that cross. When he died, that veil was rent in twain. And he opened the pathway for man to come to God. Well, I tell you, that ought to make you, amen, do backward somersaults, amen? amen. Why? Because I'm not an enemy of God. No more. I'm a child of God. He said he called us friend. Amen? It, it, it is a reconciling message. And, and, and part of that reconciling message is that it's a life-changing message. He said that for man in Christ, he's a new creature. Hey, listen, the things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. Amen? The places I used to go, I don't go there anymore. Why? Because there's been a great, great change since I've been born again. The only way that I was able to change, the only way I was able to go to God, amen, was because of the cross. Because of the cross. Now, the next thing here is the is sad part. Go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter number 3. Verse number 18. The Bible says this. It says, For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Would you not agree that the message of the cross is the most important message ever given on the face of the earth? Amen. Why on earth would it have enemies? I mean, it brings man to God. It gives people peace. Why on earth would it have enemies? Galatians, turn back, or turn over there, Galatians, chapter number one, verse number six. It says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Isn't it amazing that, there would, that this message would have an enemy that would pervert the gospel? See, there's only one gospel. Amen. There's only one. You say, well, they're, pre now they're preaching something different. What they're doing is they're preaching a perversion of the true gospel. Because they all have a little bit of element of truth in them. Amen? But what happens is they don't realize that they've been deceived until, if they ever realize it, until later. But there's only one true gospel. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Back just a couple pages. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, look at verse number uh, 4. It says, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if he receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Look at verse 4, 13. It says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Do you realize that if the devil walked in the back door tonight, there ain't a person in here that would pick up that it was a devil? Right. Right. He ain't going to be carrying a pitchfork. He ain't going to have two horns. He ain't going to have some tail, pointed tail, amen? He's going to walk in and look just like the rest of us. He transforms himself into an angel of light. Now, do you think the devil is going to go up to people before a man of God preaches and say, now listen, what you're going to hear is a false gospel. You think the devil's going to do that? No. The preacher ain't going to get up and say, listen, I want everybody to know that what I'm about to preach is against the Bible. It's against God. If you listen to it, it'll send you straight to hell. It's a false gospel. The devil ain't going to do that. 
The devil's very slick in how he does it. See, the, de the Bible, uh, the, the devil gets men to preach a false gospel as if it was the true gospel. And it, as I said, it has just enough element of truth in it that people believe it. But the Bible says that they believe a lie. The Bible, the Bible says that they that that in the last days that's what the uh, what's going to happen is God's going to send a strong delusion that they're going to believe a lie. Now people are doing that today. They're believing a false gospel. They're believing a a a perverted gospel. And you can name anything you want to name. You can name works for salvation. You can name baptism for salvation. Amen. You can name any, uh, just being a member of a church. Amen. You can name any number of things. But there's a lot of perversions of the gospel out there. Now listen, one of the things, amen, that I believe is the biggest problem we have in our independent Baptist churches today is this gospel that says all you've got to do is pray a prayer and you can be saved. Amen. 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 All you got to do, hey, uh, you, you knock on somebody's door, hey, you know if you were to die today, you'd be 100% sure you go to heaven. No, I don't. Well, here, let me show you this. And you go through Romans 3, 23, 6, 23, 5, 8, 10, 13. Now, you don't want to go to hell, do you? No, of course I don't want to go to hell. You want to go to heaven, don't you? Yeah, I want to go to heaven. Well, say this prayer. Repeat this prayer after me. Now, here's another one. Is there any verse in the Bible that says that you're supposed to ask Jesus into your heart to be saved? It ain't in there. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Hey, listen, when I got saved when I was eight years old, I did pray, okay? I prayed a prayer, but it was not the prayer that saved me. It was my belief in Jesus Christ. Hey, the Ethiopian eunuch, amen? Uh, Paul, uh, uh, Philip was witnessing to the Ethiopian eunuch, and he says, hey, he said, here's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if you pray this prayer, you can be baptized. Is that what he said? No. He said, if thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest." Amen. Amen. It's belief that is what is going to save a person. Amen. Do you remember, do you remember the thief on the cross? What did he say at first? He said, if thou be the Son of God, they both said, if thou be the Son of God, get us down in, in yourself too. And then one of them looked back and he said, when thou comest into thy kingdom, remember me. What happened between if and when? He believed. Something got a hold of his heart that this man was who he said he was. And he believed on him. Amen? I'm telling you, we have been sold a bill of goods in our Baptist churches that all you've got to do is pray. All you've got to do is... That's why 99% of the gospel tracts in our Baptist churches are perversions of the gospel. Because you flip it over to the back and it says, Dear sinner friend, if you'd like to go to heaven, pray this prayer. Amen. You're preaching right, pal, even though I don't know a few people say amen. amen. It's the truth. I told you, you may pray. Probably most in here did pray when you got saved. But it wasn't a prayer to save it. It was belief. Amen. It was repentance in Christ. It was Holy Spirit conviction. Amen. I'm for tracts. Hey, hand out all the tracts you can hand out. Amen. Just make sure it's got the gospel on them. Amen. Make sure it's got that belief in there. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, well, what about the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord? The word call means, it means to invoke. It means to invite. It, it means to claim as. Amen? In other words, you ain't got a leg to stand on. You're claiming Him. Amen? It ain't anything you've done. It's what He did. That's why it's not religion that saves. Amen? It's salvation that saves. Religion is what you do for God. Amen? Christianity, salvation, what God's already done for you. Amen? Amen. Right. The gospel is a hated message. It's a hated message. People have tried to pervert it for thousands of years. And lastly, I already said it. I'm not going to dwell on it, but it's a peace-giving message. It's a peace-giving message. Thank God that He is the Prince of Peace. And when I met Jesus at the cross, He gave me a peace that passes all understanding.